Kutaro had been snatched away by an enormous arachnid. But why didn't he end up as dinner? Perhaps the spider mistook Kutaro for one of her 10,000 children. Hard to keep track of all those little darlings, even with eight eyes. his dark powers. The vines were just your ordinary, commonplace garden variety in massive weeds. Vines cling to anything they can get their festering feelers on, until they cover everything. Sneaky, you say? But aren't we all clinging to something bigger than ourselves? Strangling the life out of it? Skeleton. It must have taken thousands of gallons of milk or moon cheese to produce such a magnificent set of bones. I myself detest the stuff. Lactose intolerant, don't you know? But by all means, if you want to grow up to be a big, strong skeleton locked in a cage, keep drinking your milk. If you don't like milk, there are always fish bones. That's where I get all my calcium. Unlike wild carp, which are a sort of grayish brown, the koi is a domesticated variety prized for its panoply of colors. Right now, Kudaro is hitching a ride on a Yamabuki gold. But I'm personally much fonder of the tricolored Sanke. Something about those sublimely balanced splotches of red and black upon that fishy white canvas. Oh, it sends me into raptures. That's nice, Shaw. But this is a streamer. It's made of polyester. Golden polyester, but it's still a grieving. How many festivals do you know of that are held underwater? When it's a bountiful harvest you're praying for, nothing butters up your gods and ancestors better than lugging around heavy portable shrines. A particularly rowdy festival usually climaxed with Kapagairu romping about in the dark, forging romances and finding creative ways to increase the Kapagairu population.
the thing to remember about mummies is that they are people who want to live forever. They seek longevity in the world to come. What, eh? You want to make your own? Oh, you. Very well. Step one, find a fresh corpse. Step two, wash said corpse and remove internal organs. Step three, leave out to dry in the desert sun. Step four, gently wrap moisture-free corpse in bandages. Step five, pass mummy among friends and cover it with secret hieroglyphs for archaeologists to puzzle over in the millennia to come. fought on the open seas, not your belly button, started out primitive. You know, ramming, forcible boarding, pummeling with arrows and fire, that's all. Then, boom, along came the cannon, and sea roads took up blasting each other from a distance. Whole rows of cannons called batteries were placed along the length of ships as captains cooked up crafty ways to broadside their opponents. Smartly known, my teams, and the six pounders. Fire! Fire! Take those scurvy sea biscuits! <laughs> Jellyfish, jellyfish, loosened and free. How graceful, how fair, they're adrift in the sea. Why swish a fin? The fish have it worse. Why cling to rocks? That's a barnacle's curse. Food comes to you, you spawn as you please. The poison within you makes defense a breeze. Oh, what I give to do nothing so well, to float with a plum and at wafting excel. Jellyfish, jellyfish, lord of the brine. Oh, how I wish that your life were mine. Yeah, because wouldn't it be great to not have a spine? Naturally, the submarine was yellow, as all self-respecting submarines should be. It was like a buttery yellow sunset, as the age of turmoil melted away to reveal a far-out, trippy era of peace, where your grandmother darned your socks and you could knock on your neighbor's door without carrying a pepper spray. What the heck are you talking about?
wonderful, simply tremendous. So the skull fossil Kutaro found before was from this dinosaur. There could be no mistake about it. This was the find of the century. Oh, well then, I guess it's okay it just ate us! What luck! Scientists have debated for years whether this, the king of the dinosaurs, the most famous carnivore in all history, was a bloodthirsty predator that hunted for live prey, or a scavenger that simply hunted for corpses. Lion or jackal? The irrefutable truth was just seconds away. It looks like he dines on pretty much anything. E gads! An omnivore! This completely shatters conventional paleontological thinking. Man, where'd this guy go out to eat? It looks like he gobbled up half of civilization. A small price to pay for the advancement of science, would you? This just in. Shots were fired on Route 66 today, shortly after high noon. Charged with the disturbance was Kotaro, a puppet, who Moon Police apprehended on the scene for possession of a loaded firearm. A moonwide APB for the suspect was already out in connection with the theft of calibers from Castle Grimmstein and a recent string of Moonstone heists. Don't worry. The leading man may get thrown into jail, but he always breaks out. Breaking news! We've just received reports that accused scissor thief and moonstone smuggler Kotaro has escaped from prison. Police are urging all law-abiding grubs to stay vigilant and avoid confronting the suspect, who is considered odd and snippy. has been prized throughout history as one of its greatest marvels. From ancient Roman Colosseums right up to the circus tents of today, crowds have flocked to see ordinary men pitted against this majestic animal. And they usually root for the lion. Now it's your turn, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, as the magical theater proudly presents the Circus Gregorius's breathtaking, hair-raising Papidon Pinata Lion Extravaganza!
Once upon a time, there lived a poor little puppet named Kuto. From dawn till dusk, a horrible witch worked Kuto to the bone, while his wicked step-friend, Picarina, laughed and called him names. Then one day, Kutaro used his fairy head magic to turn an ordinary pumpkin into an impressive coach that carried him right to Prince Moonbear King's doorstep at the Black Castle. But the magic expired prematurely, and as Kutaro fled, he dropped his real head along with his personality and memories on the castle steps. <laughs> what kind of goofball Cinderella story is that? Uh, first of all, get your casting right. I am so not the wicked stepfriend. There's no such thing as a stepfriend. Besides, I'm pure-hearted and kind and beautiful. Everyone loves me. I should be cast as a princess. Obviously, you know, with a tiara. I should be the star. Anyway, get your facts straight before I take my copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales and whack it over the fence. Welcome to Gingerbread Land! You guys have your own land? That's awesome! You're telling me! I know! Gingerbread is a soft, moist treat flavored with ginger and molasses. People cut us into the shape of little ginger people and hang us up at Christmas time. Ah, oh, we're the most important snack in all of human history. Hold it right there. The whole galaxy knows that the most important snack in all of human history is pizza. Pizza? Yeah. What's that? It sounds gross. It is not! Oh, now Mr. Man had done it. Nothing wrecks a pleasant chat more reliably than trying to agree upon food. And besides, the most important snack in human history is obviously pudding. <laughs> what do you know about food? You're British! Yeah! What? I'll have you know that British cuisine is... idea behind many an amusement park attraction. After all, who doesn't love a good gravity-induced thrill? The human body was practically made to be tied to an elastic core and hurled toward a sprunky climax. Bungee jumping relieves stress, douses depression, and keeps boring old reality at bay. And it's easy. Young and old can all get in on that bungee action. All you need is what? Doorknob and a rubber band. Get to it, kid! On the 8th of July, 1947, a single flying saucer crashed down in Roswell, New Mexico. The US military recovered extraterrestrial beings known as greys from the crash site and performed autopsy. And that was just the first close encounter. Beginning in the 1960s, people began reporting sightings, abductions, cattle mutilations, and other strange phenomena all connected to the Greys. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we get to see this strange and fascinating species firsthand. <laughs> oh, please! The Greys are just one big hoax. There's, like, zero scientific evidence. You might as well call them purples or bird siennas. <laughs> Look, the only places that support life are the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun. Fact. 
Luckily, the honeybees came to Kutaro's rescue, and he escaped the danger. Now, lunar honeybees are known to sometimes carry moon sparkles back to their hive instead of nectar. By painstakingly purging the hive of the moon sparkles, like so, the bees are able to produce a honey of the purest variety. Mmm, I do love me some honey. What's not to love about nectar the bees found who knows where? and stored in ant-like stomachs, only to vomit it up again so they can mix it with gooey gobs of bee spit. Ugh, what? Have you got something against honey? No, but I can't say I have anything to say for it either. think you can go beak to beak with old GMT, that is to say, Galahagrid Mulberry Times a Wasted, aka Mr. Pink, in the field of gentlemanly rhetoric. Fiddlesticks! While I salute your linguistic limberness and duly note a certain congruence in our countenances, purely inconsequential, mind you, I find you woefully presumptuous to presume your words are half as sumptuous or as scintillating as mine. And though no doubt you mean to match me, it'll report for repost, would it be fair to assume that? Because I generally don't don't like jumping to conclusions, they lead to contusions and hold on, I'm not looking at that as in my real self, not the first result from me by which I've been presented. You know, you ought to relish this chance to have a literal and not at all figurative internal monologue, even if it's really my monologue and not yours. But really, what's the difference as long as you've got a lawn ornament for a head? Or, wait, I suppose this is a symbolic gesture, you know, like you're non-metaphorically cutting through all... Finally, Kutaro managed to cut Mr. Pink's vicious liver, both soliloquising short. <laughs> Humankind's fascination with giant, hairy ape men living deep in the mountains. The Himalayas have their Yeti, the Rockies their Bigfoot or Sasquatch, and then there's the Chinese Yaran, Japan's Hippocar. The list of sightings goes on and on. Were they just big bears? The last remnants of Gigantopithecus, the tallest primate in history? The debate rages on, but one thing is clear. These creatures are very real, and certainly not bald-faced lies concocted by slackers who wanted to get out of work in the coal mines, or half-baked attempts by men dressed in guinea suits to drum up some extra cash for their Everest climb. Certainly not that. If you want to know about human history, just look at human warfare. 
Since we picked up our first hatchet, the whole of the helm and the unexplored frontiers of science have just been excuses to shed blood on a grander scale. And then the advent of aircraft brought our swathe of destruction to the skies as well. Why do we do it? Why do we let hate guide us? All we need to do is love, peace, and understanding. Arrgh! Rip those dastards apart, Grizzle! Oh! Blast the Grizzle Stallion's gremlins right out of the sky! Let the rivers choke on their evil blood! Nobody messes with the captain of the Lunar Solar Terrestrial Federation and lives to talk about it! Nobody! state-of-the-art grub manufactory at the heart of the Black Castle. Here, the souls of innocent children were melted down, poured into molds, tempered with terrible thoughts, and reborn as mass-produced, built-to-spec cons in the tyrant's workforce and army. Naturally, they were made to obey unquestioned and give their lives in his service. Quality assurance was in place to make certain the downs were quickly identified and booted from the assembly line. There was a business in the house. Hurry, Kutaro, free them from their pain, send them back to Earth, and let the school systems do this to them instead. <laughs> 